Hi everyone. So I'm just going to walk you through the signing process and adding, specifically adding text to your documents. So um, I'm first going to, I'm in my e-signature, so let's, I'm in documents. Here are all my documents that I have brought in and filled out. And then I'm going to go to e-sign. Now I've had a few, I've created a few um, e-signature packets down here, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to go to new. And this is where I add the documents that are already in there. So I want to show you the affiliated business. And as you can see, it's a PDF. And then I'm also going to do the real estate condition report. And as you can see, this one is a zip forms fillable document. And then I'm actually going to also add an external document. So you'd probably have to do this maybe when you receive an accepted or a counter offer on a property that you have listed. So I'm actually going to find the counter offer. And this is just a blank one. And I'm going to upload that in here as well. Okay, so now when I close out of this, I have three documents in my e-signature packet to set up for signatures. I'm going to change the packet name to test. And I'm going to choose a folder for my returned items to go into. I've already created the signed listing docs folder. Unfortunately, you have to do this step prior to getting to this spot. So there's no way to create a new folder now. So um, try to remember before you get to the spot to create a new folder for these signed docs to go into. I do recommend it just to keep the signed docs separate from um, your original so you don't get them mixed up. Okay, um, I'm going to add myself as, I'm sorry, I'm going to do my husband so that it shows up as a different name. So I'm going to add my seller. And I'm going to add myself. Okay. And then next. And of course, it's spinning. Um, while it's spinning, always just verify that your time zone says central. And this is um, your order on who's going to be signing first, who's going to get it first. Keep this in mind that seller number one, where it says seller one, if you're having your seller sign a real estate condition report, the person that you put in the seller one position is the one who is going to be given the ability to fill out any fillable, um, any fillable spots within the condition report, the addendum S, whatever it may be. Um, seller one is the one who fills it out seller two is only just a signature so um, make sure you're putting the person that you want to have fill out the documents in that in that position okay now you can see i've got my documents up so i'm actually going to show you how to let's say you want to fill in this two section you're going to go to markup and specifically markup there are two t's there is one in drag and drop and there is one in markup. They are different. The one that's in drag and drop, think of this entire box, everything that's in here is for your client. So if you want your client to fill something out, then you would use this T and it's just gonna put a blank box in there for them to fill out. If you wanna add text, you're gonna use the markup. So you're gonna select it, you're gonna put it where you want it to go, and then you're gonna type in there. Now, um, the other thing you're gonna do is drag and drop, sign here. I might as well kind of walk you through this step as well, of course. You're always gonna add your auto date because it's important that everyone knows when it was uh, signed. So um, put that date in there. One thing I also want you to remember while I have you here is anything that is outlined in red is required. Anything that is outlined in blue is optional for them to sign. So when you get to your condition report and you see three red dots, your 
seller cannot miss a dot. Um, they're going to give the option of this one or this one or this one in that row. They have to select one of the three. Otherwise, it won't let them complete their signing process. So um, keep that in mind. Now, these are the text box from Drag and Drop. So you'll kind of see these are outlined in blue. They are optional. Um, I have had a few people complain about um, it not letting them type an, a lot in here, where it actually stops like right there. It gives them 25 character limit. If you go to the settings box after you click on each one of these, if you go to that little gear, there's a character limit. You can raise that up and you can put 60 or 100 or whatever it might be. Um, the other thing you can do is you can put multi-line and you can have them fill it out this way. If you are going to use a multi-line, that's fine. Just make sure you're deleting all of the other ones so that your seller doesn't get confused as to what they're supposed to fill out because it's going to still tab through those. So if you're going to use multi-line, great. This is a great way to set up your real estate condition reports. Um, now, the other thing that the real estate condition report has is it does make seller number one initial. It doesn't make seller number two initial. You can delete those. I, I'm not sure why they haven't you do that. Probably one more added bonus to having it complete, but um, I have been deleting them. Okay, so you can go through and do that if you'd like. Um, you have to at least change the character limit. So if you're not going to change it to multi-line and delete all the boxes, that's totally fine. But just change the character limit and up it. Don't put too high of a character limit on there because I think it actually like reduces the font size. So I would suggest putting like a hundred character limit on there and no more. Um, then let's say you've got a counter offer that you brought in and you are having, you're putting your seller's name underneath it. This is markup again. We're going to go to markup again because I'm doing it, not my client. And I'm going to move it where I want it to go. And that's where you put, um, that's how you use the text in, you know, if you were going to be using this as counter. Now I want you to, the reason I brought this counter up is because there's a lot of strike throughs in here, you know, strike one, rejected or countered, strike one, um, if you're doing something there. The way to strike this would be to add text box from markup, move it where you want it to be. And then you're just going to X through it. So just type in X's and that's rejecting it. This, for some reason, pops up. This feature has been disabled by your association. I don't know why. I'm not sure why. Um, and I don't know, maybe you could do a box, I guess. Where does that even show up? But I, I don't think that really, I mean, you'd have to change your settings. You could do this as your strike through. That would be your other option. Oops. Get over here. But just remember, you have to be able to see what you're striking through. So this is probably a little bit more of, um, I don't know, I think I'd rather just do the X's. <laughs> Either one, whatever you decide, but again, you still have to see what you've stricken. So um, that is all, and if you have any other questions about this, please let me know. Thanks.